so good to see you uh, here Thank today. You. I, I uh, watched the whole um, hearing on, on uh, my television in my office and uh, was really appreciative with, with generous spirit on both sides of the aisle and the substance of the question. I, I did hear one colleague, though, uh, refer to Biden administration's in, uh, nominees as embracing China, I think was that, that was the exact wording. And I found that just patently unfair and untrue. And then I heard one speech being taken in a way that was patently offensive to me at a moment that we just had a siege on the Capitol. And I would actually say that of all the members here of this committee, there's not one that doesn't have something in a speech in their past that they regret doing, as this person has said, especially at a time that we see people whipped up to storm a Capitol and the perpetuation of baseless lies that an election that was won by seven million votes was a fraud. And so I'm, I'm particularly galled <laughs> that in the spirit of bipartisanship, which we usually have, that you were uh, treated like you were recently about one speech that you had already thoroughly explained to numerous members. And the generosity of some of my friends on the other side of the aisle was pointed very clearly. You were invited to give a speech by an HBCU. Now, some of my colleagues might not know this. I have buckets of invitations of speeches where I get speech invitations that I prioritize. If you're a New Jersey University, you got me. <laughs> if you are one of my alma maters, you got me. But when I get a call from an HBCU, I would imagine to the nominee, you know the sacred importance of HBCUs. You know that they are the number one producer in America of black generals, number one producer in America of black doctors, number one producer in America of black professors, PhDs, and so forth. In fact, if there is a hope for this country ever to reach equality in all the ranks of all the professions, would you agree with me that the HBCUs are still that hope? Without a doubt, Senator, thank yeah. you very much. Yes, and, and as a person who is the, has two generations before me going to HBCUs, the fact that you accepted an invitation from a black college <laughs> to give a speech, to me, shows that you have the right priority list, because I will tell you this, our State Department ranks are woefully lacking in African Americans. When I travel the globe and visit embassies, they are woefully lacking. We are now at a period where we've had a, a black vice president, first woman as well, first woman treasurer, you are one of the generations of women that are breaking down barriers and showing the way for women and African Americans. I, I imagine your commitment to continue to do that is the same, yes. Absolutely. Now, the other thing that just galled me a little bit, it was the fact that Senator Menendez, my senior senator, who is friend and mentor to me, read a whole list through your research, Senator Menendez, of examples for I think 10 to 20 years of you being a canary in the coal mine making warnings about China, China's activities in Africa. And so to the Senator Menendez, who I rarely ever tell him what to do, so I'll ask him, could you introduce that litany into the record in a formal way so that it is there forever? I'd be happy to. Thank you very much. So I just want you to know I am celebrating that you are sitting before me right now because I know the challenges we still have in this country. And I watched after George Floyd was savagely murdered, how it wasn't just all 50 states of America that came out and protested, but we saw other nations, right? At least a dozen other countries, because they know that the United States of America, if we can make our values true here, there's hope for the world. Would you agree with that? Yes, sir. So I, I have 30 seconds left, and I apologize for using all my time, uh, but I just want you to know, for my ancestors, for communities of color all around the world who wonder if this nation will ever achieve itself, will ever get to a point where we can be a country where we celebrate the richness of our diversity, not just in words, but in positions of leadership, where we achieve our potential, as past generations saw when they brought hidden figures out of the shadows and sat them together with NASA astronauts and literally defied gravity, that you today, sitting in that seat, 
are a reason to rejoice. And your record is unapproachable in your patriotism to this country under Democratic uh, uh, and Republican administrations. I thank you, I celebrate you, and I will submit my questions for the record in hopes that you will give me that response. I yield to you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.